Okay, we have Mr. Fred Beetle, my Cuban brother. Is it Beetle or Beato? What is it? Uh, it's up to you. It's your name. <laughs> Fernando Beato. <laughs> okay. You know what they used to call me in Cuba? Okay. In school. Well, yeah, I have to translate. They used to go Beato Carregato, and I used to get so upset they would say Beetle Catface uh, in first grade. That's crazy, man. So why don't we start off? Um, the fact that we're both from Cuba. Um, I was born in 1954. I left in 1956. My dad didn't feel right about Castro. He was coming into power. And right before it all happened, we left. We went to Miami, and we left Miami, and I went to Tampa. I lived in Tampa, Florida, eight years. Then I came here to California, where I've lived the rest of my life. So why don't you say a little bit of your his story is incredible. It's like heavy. It should be a movie, actually. Want to give well, a little rundown? Well, me and uh, not me, I and I think it was like close to two thousand or three thousand. I forgot. We were called Peter Pan kids, Pedro Pan, meaning that there was a rumor going around that Castro was going to be sending all the kids. Uh, to Russia to be trained to become technicians of the revolution, whatever wow. whatever the hell he called it. And a lot of the parents started freaking out. And then they started sending their children out of Cuba to get them out of harm's way without them. Just what year is this, Fred, more or less? 1962. Okay, so I was gone. So okay. I, I think it started in 61 and it ended okay. in 62. I, I was, was 10 gone. years old. Okay. So my mother put me in a plane to come to America without having, well, I, I, I was fortunate. I had my aunt and uncle that came from New York to take care of me and my two other cousins that also fled as Peter Pan kids. But there were thousands of little kids that came to America. They had to go to these foster homes. I mean, it was brutal. A lot of kids were sent uh all over the country. Some of them never saw their parents again, so it was a brutal thing. So, But I came out in 1962. Okay. I was uh, 10 years old. And then you lived with your grandma at first? No, I lived uh, with my aunt and uncle in I Florida know. and my other and my cousins that they had left. They had left prior. Mm -hmm. They left in, they, they, they started splitting in 60 and 61. I was the last of the grandkids to get out, 1962. When was your mom able to come to My me? mom, that's another thing. They had the Cuban Missile Crisis, and um, Castro shut the doors, and nobody could leave the country. Oh. And he finally reopened them in 1969 because there was so much starvation going on that he figured if you were not of military age, and you were either a woman or you were a, uh, a senior citizen, like an old person, you'd be better off getting the hell out. Okay. So, so then my mother was able to reunite with me when I was like 17 years old. 17. And, and, and how long had you not seen her for? Seven years. Wow. It that's, was brutal that's, stuff, man. That's heavy, man. And, uh, you know, that's but we're lucky heavy. that we're here. You know, we're lucky that we're yeah, here yeah. because... Um, no, yeah, we would have... Really Fred, tough. if you and I would have stayed there, we wouldn't have had the life we had. I mean, I'm not saying we're millionaires, billionaires, but this leads me to my next story. You've done well for yourself um, forming beetle bags. You can show the... the oh, you want to see a bag? I'm yeah, yeah, show everybody one of your bags. Uh, I own a bunch of those bags. Turn it around. It's sideways. Beetle bag, uh, sideways. Tom Tom right bag. Now. Let me see, Fred. This is the Cordura series. Yeah. Um, so I have a bunch of drum sets, and I put them in beetle bags. <laughs> and before I even met Fred, I t whoa, sorry about that. Sorry. Right. Um, I told him when I finally spoke with him. I said, by the way, I've got a bunch of your bags. You won't believe it. Gong, congas, everything. At my house, and when you came over, you probably were surprised. <laughs> How you, many? You have more bags than me, man. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, you got about what twenty-five drum sets, twenty drum sets. Not quite so many, but between my percussion and 
you know, my gong, everything. You know, it, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot of stuff that I, I keep have. telling you. Sell all that stuff. Want to buy them? No, I don't want to buy them, okay. but I want you to buy like a oh, silver sparkle or champagne sparkle. I already, kid. I already took care of the silver. My last set was uh, a blue um, acrylic in the middle, a hybrid set from Spawn. Silver sparkle on top, silver sparkle on the bottom. So, and a all silver, which was your idea, all silver sparkle snare. It pops, right? Yeah, dude. Does it ever pop? Yeah. And you I got to plug drums. Spawn drums, Brian. They're the best drums I've ever played. And Simtech cymbals um, also come from Brian Spawn. So, what else can we talk about? Um, let me see. Fred, you have done some good things in music. Uh, you not only went to school with Dave Pack and were in a band, you can tell them about that one, uh, the Symbols of Time, right? When we were kids, I went to Torrance High School, and uh, it's a true story. The way I formed the band, remember, I was very fortunate to live in the renaissance of rock and roll when everything happened. It started with the Beatles and the Ed Solomon Show, you know, and everybody went crazy. Everybody started all of a sudden letting their hair grow, buying, you know, Panamanian boots to try to be like Ringo and Paul McCartney. That's why I started playing drums. Well, the minute I saw too. him, not to interrupt you, but the minute I saw him on Ed Sullivan. Well, yeah, you you and half the it country. Was over. You and half the country. So the way, so I really got the bug to start playing music. And I don't know what the hell I was doing. But I said, I'm going to form a band. I was a freshman in high school. So the way I did it, I mm. would ask people, you know anybody that plays a trumpet? And then a girl would say, yeah, uh, Mike Dandler plays the trumpet. Oh, really? Who's Mike Dandler? That little blonde-haired surfer-looking guy there. Okay. So we go up to Mike Dandler and go, hey, Mike, can you play the Lonely Bull? And then he would say, yeah, I can play the Lonely Bull. I said, you're in the band. Uh -huh. Next. Oh, there's a guy named Bill Kaler that plays the saxophone. Really? Hi, Bill. My name is Fernando Eato back in the day. And I hear you play the sax. Yeah, I do. Can you play tequila? Yeah, I can play tequila. You're in the band. So I went like that, and I formed a nine-piece band like that wow. by asking people, can you play? Can you play? Okay, you're in the band. And then we started playing. We started rehearsing. And then the band started getting... It started getting hot for some reason. We were a bunch of little kids, you know. Talk about Dave Pack. When well, anyway, so David Pack, that is a phenomenal, I mean, that guy oh, yeah. is a genius, musical genius. Now, was he already that good in high school, or did he develop? He was good from day one. Really? Oh, wow. shit. I saw him doing uh, an assembly at <clears throat> Torrance High School. They used to have those assemblies right. for the yeah. football season. yeah. yeah. And, and we used to play them all the time. It was fun. You know, we thought we were the Beatles with all the people screaming. <laughs> but anyway, the first time I saw him, he sang a song. I forgot what it's called. He used to go, see the pyramids alone. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Yeah. And when I saw him, I, I looked at him and I said, I thought right there, I go, this guy is going to make it. I knew it. Wow. I knew it. Wow. And then later, after our group broke up, he started Ambrosia. And those guys are definitely one of the best oh, American yeah. bands yeah, ever. They had great songs. Yeah. Well, a lot, he's a, a lot he, of hits. And, and he wrote all the songs, man. He wrote the songs? He wrote them and he sang them. Ooh, all the hits. I didn't know he wrote the songs. Oh, yeah. 